Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. With a bit of background out of the way, we're going to get into our first attack called re-entrancy attacks. In this video, we're going to explain what that is and go through some code. And in the next video, we're going to write our own code and our own exploit and actually exploit the findings. Re-entrancy attacks are a result of a contract performing an action before updating the corresponding state value. An example of this would be withdrawing money from a bank before updating the user's account value. So normally your logical flow would be check if the user has enough money, withdraw the money from the user's account, and then update the user's balance, which is what you see here in the code. So in this code, we have a withdraw function. This withdraw function is written in the Solidity programming language. Solidity isn't much different than any other programming language and is easy to understand. The third line of this function is the declaration with the name withdraw. The function takes in the value of the withdraw amount and is a public function. This function returns a uint value. Next, we have our program's logic flow within the require statements. Require statements simply require an action to return true in order to continue to the next line. For example, in line 5, we require the withdraw amount is less than or equal to the sender's current balance. This makes sense as the user has to have enough money in order to withdraw. The sender in this is the person calling the function, message.sender. Once we have established that the sender has enough funds for the transaction, in line 6, we use call.value to send the withdraw amount to the sender. We then update the balance of the sender by subtracting the withdrawal amount, returning the balance of the user to the calling function. The problem with this function is that you can call a smart contract with another smart contract. For example, this code right here. And when it's returned, it will call something called a fallback function. So here, we will call the withdraw function with our amount, and when it comes back, it'll come to our fallback function. Then, when it hits our fallback function, we can have other functionality in here that calls the function again before ever updating the user's value in line 8 right here. So, if we take a look at a little diagram I wrote, you will see that right here we call the withdraw function, which takes the withdrawal amount and it goes through it, checks the value, it sends the money back to the user, which goes to our fallback function right here. Then it executes some more code that says if the bank's balance is greater than the amount we're asking, go back into the function again and run this code. And as you'll see here, we kind of have a recursive loop that keeps going through and it never actually takes money from the sender's balance because this bank address dot balance is not the sender's address balance. It is actually the balance of the smart contract as a whole. So think of it like a bank has a whole bunch of users. There's a large amount. That is the bank address balance. However, the user's balance is only a small portion of that. So what will happen is we go in and we keep recursively taking out money until the bank is completely empty. And now our calling user has all of the money in the bank, not just the money they originally contributed. The reason that this works in this recursive loop is that because we never actually get to this statement where we withdraw our amount from our balance, every single time we check that our withdraw amount is less than our balance, it's always true. So we're actually just taking money from the whole and not money from ourself until we finally run out of money in the bank and we end up down here. I hope that explanation all makes sense. In the next video, we'll evaluate a whole program and start writing our own code that can interact with that program, and then we'll finally exploit the re-entrancy attack live. If you learned something in this video, hit the like button. If you want to be updated of new videos, hit the subscribe button.